with this video tutorial i am going to start a new playlist on acid base balance this is the first lecture of this playlist where i will be discussing about overview of acid base balance so whenever we start a discussion about the acid base balance we have to first understand what is the definition of acid and bases there are numerous definition about the acid and bases but whenever we consider biological system we have to consider bronsted lowry definition of acid and base so according to this model acids are defined as a molecule that can donate h plus so acids are molecules that can donate h plus and this h plus are nothing but simply protons similarly bases are also defined bases are molecules that can accept h plus or proton so according to this definition of acid and base we can prepare a generalized model for the acid so generally acid can be represented by this symbol h and a here h represents hydrogen atom whereas a represent its associated anion so when this ha undergoes any solution it is dissociated into h plus and a minus right so here we can see that this general acid ha it is donating its h plus ions into the solution right now there are two different kinds of acids one is strong acid and other one is weak acids so whenever strong acid is there it has strong tendency to donate its h plus and so there is a complete dissociation occurs like this right so we represent strong acid by this right headed arrow whereas to represent weak acid they have a weak tendency to donate h plus so we represent it by this reversible arrow so there are forward and reversible reaction both simultaneously going on so here we indicate by this reversible arrow that this particular acid has a weak tendency to donate its h plus and there is a dynamic equilibrium exist between this ha and h plus a minus right so now i hope that definition of acid and base is clear now next thing that we need to understand is that the concentration of hydrogen ions in body fluid varies greatly there is a great difference of hydrogen and concentration in different fluid for example in case of gastric juice hydrogen ion concentration is 0.01 mole per liter whereas in case of pancreatic juice hydrogen ion concentration is 0.00000001 so after decimal point there are total eight zeros and then one occurs so as compared to gastric juice pancreatic juice contains very less hydrogen ion concentration we can say that there is a great variation for the hydrogen ion concentration you can see that if you compare gastric juice and pancreatic juice then gastric juice contain 10 raised to 7 times higher concentration of hydrogen ion than the pancreatic juice now if hydrogen ion concentration is represented in this mole per liter unit then it becomes very much inconvenient for us why because this much smaller number it is very difficult to remember as well as in the on the clinical side it it becomes very much difficult to interpret these values right so for that in the clinics generally we use ph scale then what is ph so simply ph is the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration and remember whenever any molecule is written in the square bracket that means we are talking about its concentration in this mole per liter unit right so we can find out the ph of all these different hydrogen and concentration and here i had shown you the ph so gastric juice ph is 2 and pancreatic juice ph is 9 so here now this 2 and 9 these numbers are very easy to remember as well as they are very easy to interpret also now the next thing that we need to understand is that the ph of biological system must be maintained within narrow range now we might think that how much narrow range so for that i had taken example of arterial blood ph 
Remember, on the clinical side, arterial blood pH is very very important to diagnose certain disease to even determine the prognosis of certain disease, right? So, arterial blood pH, it is in a range of 7.35 to 7.45. This is the normal or reference range for the arterial blood pH. Now, if I convert this pH of 7.35 into the hydrogen ion concentration in moles per liter, it corresponds to this number. And this 7.45, it corresponds to this concentration of hydrogen ion in mole per liter. So, now hydrogen ion concentration is between this number and this number. And indeed, there is a very less gap between these two numbers. So, we can say that it is maintained within very narrow range. Now, what will happen if it is not maintained in such a narrow range? Suppose arterial blood pH, if it becomes less than 7.35, we call such condition as a acidemia. And if pH becomes more than 7.45, that is upper reference range for the arterial blood pH, we call it as a alkalemia. Now, remember this acidemia has a similar looking word that is known as acidosis. And alkalemia, we have another word alkalosis. Now, in uh, different books, you will find that many a times acidemia is used interchangeably with the acidosis. They consider acidemia as a synonymous with the acidosis, but this is wrong. There is very subtle difference between this word acidemia and this word acidosis. And likewise, there is a subtle difference between alkalemia and alkalosis. Remember, acidemia means the pH of arterial blood is less than 7.35. Whereas acidosis, it denotes a process by which acidemia occurs. So acidosis, it denotes process by which acidemia occurs. Similarly, alkalemia, the meaning of this word is that pH is more than 7.45, whereas alkalosis it denotes a process by which alkalosis can occur, right? So, this thing, this subtle difference we have to keep in mind. Now, if you are curious to know about the venous blood pH, remember venous blood is slightly acidic than the arterial blood as the all the metabolic end products are there in the venous blood. And the venous blood pH is between 7.32 to 7.38. Right? So, indeed by this we can get an idea that pH of biological system is maintained within very narrow range. Now, what is the importance of maintenance of pH? Why nature had designed our body in such a way that pH is maintained within such a narrow range? So, the importance of maintenance of pH is this, that in our body there are so many different kinds of enzymes, right? And these enzymes are crucial to carry out various metabolic reactions in our body. Now, enzymes, they work at certain optimum pH. Optimum pH is required for the proper functioning of enzyme. If this optimum pH is not provided to enzyme, that particular metabolic reaction will stop and there will be a deleterious effect on the survival of the cell, right? So, for the enzymatic activity, this maintenance of pH is crucial and enzymatic activity on this enzymatic activity cellular metabolism is dependent. So, we can also call that cellular metabolism requires maintenance of proper pH. There are other functions are also there which can require maintenance of proper pH that is membrane potential, functioning of ion channels, transporters, functioning of organelles and cytoskeleton. So, all these functions require maintenance of pH and that is why nature had designed our body in such a way that pH is maintained, otherwise life could not have been possible, right? So, we had seen that indeed it is a pH is maintained within narrow range. Why pH in narrow range is required that also we had seen. Now, we need to see that how this particular pH is maintained in such a narrow range, right? So, we have to discuss about the overall dynamics of the pH. Now, just like any other nutrient or any other vitamin or any other trace element or ions like calcium, phosphate, magnesium, iron, for all these things, there is certain body store. There are certain entry points 
for these substances and there are certain exit points. And yes, entry and exit of the substances matches the, so that body store is fairly constant. The same thing also occurs with the pH. These hydrogen ions are not different than these all compounds. There is some store in the body in the form of pH, right? There are certain entry points for various acids and various alkalis. And there are certain exit points for the various acids and various alkalis. It is generally estimated that entry, it is more for acid that in our day to day life by our lifestyle, we take more acid and less alkali. So, entry is more for acid and less for base or alkali. So, now if body store needs to remain constant, then exit must match with the entry. So, exit is also more for acid and less for alkali. This is in the physiological state, right? So, now in the next slide, we will discuss that what are the various entry points for the acids and alkalis and how they get exited from our body, okay? So, these are the various entry points for the acids. See, in our body, there are fats and carbohydrates, right? When they are completely catabolized or you can say when they are completely oxidized and this complete oxidation occurs in the presence of enough amount of oxygen and enough amount of insulin. So, in other words, whenever there is enough oxygen and insulin is present, these fats and carbohydrates, they are completely oxidized and gives rise to water and carbon dioxide. It is estimated that each day, 15 to 20 moles of carbon dioxide is generated. So, 15 to 20 mole per day, this carbon dioxide is generated. And this carbon dioxide has a potential to form acid. It is potential to form acid. Now, how this carbon dioxide has a potential to form acid that I will discuss in some other video. But right now, currently, trust me that this carbon dioxide has a potential to form acid. Now, this carbon dioxide is in the gas form, right? So, we can call it as a volatile acid. Gas form, so volatile and it has potential to form acid. So, acid and so we can call this carbon dioxide as a volatile acid. And this volatile acid is very efficiently removed by lungs. Removed by lungs. So, here we had seen that there is an entry of this potential volatile acid and it is tackled very well by this respiratory system. So, carbon dioxide physiologically, it is not a challenge to remove, right? Now, in our body, there are protein also and proteins are made up of various different amino acids and different amino acids can generate different acids and different alkalis. So, for example, cysteine and methionine, these two sulfur containing amino acid, when they are completely catabolized, they give rise to the sulfuric acid. When this lysine, arginine, histidine, they are completely catabolized, they give rise to hydrochloric acid. When aspartate and glutamate, they are completely catabolized, they give rise to bicarbonate. See, this is acid, this is acid, this is alkali. In our diet, our diet also contains some amount of the citrate. And when the citrate is completely catabolized, it gives rise to bicarbonate ion. This is alkali. And we know that in our digestive tract, when digestion occurs, there is a secretion of pancreatic juice. And this pancreatic juice is very rich in bicarbonate. And all of this bicarbonate is not fully reabsorbed by our intestine. Some of the bicarbonate is lost into the feces, right? So, during digestion, some amount of bicarbonate is lost into feces. So, here we can see that alkali is lost. So, we can consider it as a equivalent to acid gain, right? So, we see that there are various processes which can generate acid and there are certain processes which can generate alkali. But it is estimated that acid generation is more than the alkali production, right? So, 
there is a net endogenous acid production net endogenous acid production and the short form is n e a p so net here we are telling that it's it's a net net endogenous acid production that means acid production minus alkali production and we will get a positive number so we have this net endogenous acid production it is estimated that approximately 70 milli equivalent of fixed or non volatile acid is produced by this way in our body so it is this net endogenous acid production is 70 milli equivalent per day and we know that general acid representation is this way and it dissociate into H plus and A minus. Now this H plus is poured into our extracellular fluid and if this hydrogen ions if they are not handled carefully it can lead to drop in the pH it can create acidemia which is physiologically not occurring that means something is there in the extracellular fluid which is handling this H plus and this is being handled by the bicarbonate buffer system. This bicarbonate buffer system it is made up of H2CO3 which is in the equilibrium with the H plus and HCO3 minus. So this is the bicarbonate system, bicarbonate buffer system which is present in the extracellular fluid and which it will not let pH to alter in the great way right. So, so when this 70 milliequivalent of H plus is produced each day it is directly poured into this extracellular fluid. So what will happen this extra HC extra H plus it will binds with this HCO3 minus and this reaction will move to this left direction and so it will be converted to H2CO3 and so there will be a no change in the free H plus ion concentration right. So it by looking this superficially it seems that this bicarbonate buffer system alone is efficient to absorb any H plus but no it has to pay its cost what is the cost over here see if more H plus comes then more bicarb is required so why because this bicarb will now be converted to this carbonic acid right so there will be a drop in the bicarb level and normally physiologically this does not occur if this occur then if this is continuously poured into this bicarb buffer system then at some point in time this total bicarb will be lost from our body and then life could not have been possible right. So how this is reversed right so it is reversed by the kidneys or renal system. So kidney here do, does two function the first function is that that this extra 70 milliequivalent of this fixed acid which is generated each day it has to get excreted. So excretion of excretion of H plus ions that is the first function and second that whatever drop in this bicarbonate ion occurred it has to be regenerated and this regeneration of new bicarb is also handled by this kidney. So kidney generates new bicarb so new HCO3 minus generation. So here in this slide we had seen various entry point and various exit point okay. This entry is not controlled right why because this is the normal metabolism which is generating this net endogenous acid production. This exit is controlled this exit it is controlled by three mechanism the first is this buffer mechanism the second one is the respiratory mechanism and third one is the this kidney mechanism or renal mechanism. In the subsequent video I am going to discuss about all these three mechanism in, in very clear and precise way right. So stay tuned and I hope that everything whatever I discuss in today's lecture is clear to all of you. If you have any query or confusion please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.